Hey guys, I'm Miranda with REI, and we're going to talk about how to choose climbing ropes. So just to be clear, we're going to talk about dynamic ropes, which are used for climbing, and not static ropes, which are used for hauling gear. So let's talk about how to choose. So the most common types of ropes that you'll come across are single ropes, like these guys here. These are the most widely used and probably the type of rope that you'll be looking for if you're cragging, sport climbing, uh, even multi-pitch or top roping. These are designed to just be used by clipping a single strand of rope into the gear as you go or again setting up a top rope. And you can note single ropes by looking for a circled one on the end cap of the rope. If you're not looking for a single rope and your needs are a little bit more specific, you might be looking for a half rope or a twin rope. So half ropes are designed to be used simultaneously, tied into your harness, but then as you're climbing, you'll alternate clipping the ropes into gear. So that might mean that as you're going up, you'll clip everything on your left side with the blue rope and then everything on your right side with the red rope in this instance. And this will severely decrease the amount of rope drag that you might get on meandering routes if you were to use a single rope. You can note a half rope by looking for a half symbol on the end. Some of the benefits of half ropes are that you, again, decrease the rope drag, but you also have extended rappelling length if you are to tie the two ropes together. And if one of them gets damaged, then you can use the other rope for climbing or rappelling. The last type of rope that you'll find are twin ropes. Twin ropes have all the benefits of half ropes, but you'll actually clip them in at the same time as you're climbing up. So they're better for routes that are straighter and don't have meander as much when you'd want to use a half rope. Again, those are all the different types of ropes, but single ropes are the most common ropes that you'll find when you're climbing. So once you've decided on the type of rope, the next thing to consider is the diameter of the rope. Twin and half ropes will come in diameters ranging from seven to nine millimeters, whereas single ropes are gonna come in a wide range from around eight up to 11.5 in terms of millimeters of the diameter of the rope. Now, the most common being between like nine five and 10 two for a single rope. So keep in mind that with a thicker diameter rope, you're gonna get something that's more durable and doesn't stretch as much, but is also a little bit heavier. So the thicker the diameter on the rope, the better it's gonna be for things like top roping or projecting a route. The thinner diameter ropes are going to stretch more, but also weigh a lot less. So these are really good for on siting uh, or if you're doing multi-pitch climbing where you really wanna prioritize low weight over durability. Thicker ropes, again, are going to be more durable. So if what you're looking for is something that you can set up top ropes on, we'd recommend going with a thicker diameter of rope. Ropes come in a range of lengths, anywhere from 30 meters up to 80 meters, with the most common being 60 or 70 meter ropes. When you're picking a rope, you wanna make sure the rope is long enough to go from the ground up to the top of the pitch and then back down again. And this is just so that you can lower or repel on a full length of rope. 60 meters generally cuts it for most pitches or most routes, but 70 meters gives you a little bit of extra cushion space. If you're looking for a rope for your gym, you can get generally a 30 meter or a 40 meter rope. Just check with your gym to see how tall their walls are and make sure you're getting a rope that will work for that. So once you've decided on the type, the diameter, and the length of your rope, there are a couple other features that you can consider. Almost all ropes are gonna have a middle marker like this rope here, which just marks the mid mark on the rope so that you know you'll have enough to lower or repel but then some ropes will have a bi-pattern or a bi-color sheath like this one. So this is a bi-pattern rope, meaning you have one pattern on the sheath on one half and a different pattern on the other half. This makes it a lot easier to see the midpoint on the rope, but it is gonna add a little bit of cost. Another common feature you'll come across is dry treatment on the ropes. So dry treated ropes will help repel moisture and dirt. And if you're gonna be climbing in damp conditions such as mountaineering or alpine climbing, you might wanna consider a dry treatment. Uh, one thing to consider is that ropes are not as strong when they get wet. So dry treatment helps with that as well. These are just two common features. There are a whole variety to choose from, but they're always gonna add a little bit of cost. One more thing I wanna mention are UIAA falls. So when you're purchasing a rope, you'll see a rating on there for how many UIAA falls the rope can take before it needs to be retired. Single ropes need to be rated to accept at least five UIAA falls, but this doesn't mean that you can only fall on this rope five times. These falls are massive falls that they're rating. The type of fall that if you were to take it, you'd probably be done climbing for the day. So keep that in mind when you're choosing a rope. We're not gonna get too deep into the UIAA rating system, but just know that that number does not mean that the rope needs to be done after you take that number of falls. From summit bike tour to couch surfing, airport lounge to hiking the Camino Trail, our Traveler Series bags transform to quilts for ultimate lightweight and compact versatility on the trail, bike, flight, or couch. These versatile bags' impressive warmth and compressibility is thanks to their 750 plus loft ultra dry down fill, 
a responsibly sourced hydrophobic insulation. Made from ultralight 15D nylon outer and lining fabrics, help minimize both weight and pack size, allowing our traveler bags to pack down to an almost impossibly small compressed size. A full length side zip and draw cord footbox allow these slightly tapered rectangular bags to open up to spacious quilts. The Minimalist Traveler 1 model uses a sewn through quilted construction to keep weight down, whilst the Traveler 2 uses full horizontal baffles and additional down fill to achieve extra loft and warmth. These bags feature zip coupling, allowing them to be paired with other Traveler bags. Adaptable warmth in a tiny pack size, there's every reason to make our Traveler bags your adventure companion. Hi, I'm Matt, and I'm here to tell you about the Guard Station 8. This is Base Camp, Big Agnes style. Our Guard Station 8 is a dome-style expedition shelter meant to thrive in any condition. There are so many details and features that set this tent apart from the others, but the most important are what makes it barely enough to withstand even the most extreme, high-altitude, high-alpine conditions. Single-wall polyester material with a thick, highly UV-resistant coating and heavy-duty components provide shelter for an entire crew a medical tent, a mess hall, or command center. The dome shape minimizes snow and wind load while the DAC exoskeleton pole system maximizes architectural strength and creates extensive livable space. The tent body is comprised of high tenacity materials to ensure this shelter is ready for the most extreme alpine conditions. The fly is Dominico undyed polyester ripstop made with high tenacity yarns which increase tear strength by 20 to 25 percent over standard nylon or polyester ripstop fabrics. This fabric also provides high UV resistance and stability during temperature and moisture shifts, allowing for a solid and stable pitch tent in any condition. Keep tabs on the weather through one of six windows without having to open the doors. Windows can be opened for venting or closed up tight in extreme weather. Two ceiling vents create extra airflow when needed. There are also multiple interior loops for attaching accessories and mountain glow tent and camp lights. Don't let all the burly features lead you astray. This will also make a banger mess hall for desert excursions in any season. Mountaineers, climbers, and desert adventurers, this one's for you. Our Guard Station 8 dome style shelter brings durable, base camp ready design and materials to extreme weather expeditions. Hi everybody, I'm Mikhail Mercurioff. And the reason why I brought you all up here to this beautiful place is to introduce you to my Emberlit stove. It is a compact, lightweight, wood-burning stove that frees you from having to carry any sort of fuel with you when you go backpacking. The Emberlit stove allows me to cook just about anything I want. I can cook fish on there, I can cook uh, squirrel. Yeah, we're gonna get squirrel now. Be right back a little stove that helps you contain a small fire in a much more efficient manner so you can cook your food. You can enjoy being out in nature. When you're done, you just put it away in your pack and you can forget about it. If you add together the fact that it packs completely flat, weighs almost nothing, it's just so wonderfully easy to use, I don't see how you can beat it. If you like being able to go camping without the burden of carrying extra fuel canisters or white gas or the noise or the hassle or the rush that I feel when I'm having to cook with the gas stove, why don't you come over to emberlit.com and pick yourself up a, an Emberlit stove. They come with a 100% lifetime satisfaction guarantee. We didn't actually shoot nothing. It was all done in post. We're in a park, for heaven's sakes.